Well, guys, 39 episodes later, and here we are at the end of another bizarre adventure. Welcome, everyone, to the Anime Secrets to Classified podcast. I am your host, Miguel. Today, I am joined by Anthony Davis, Connor Healy, and El Jefe, Rizwan Merchant. Say hello, everyone. Hello. What's El Jefe? The boss in Spanish. Oh, I don't speak Spanish, but okay. Got it. Also, hello, folks. Hello, everyone. The jefe here. And I was learning a new word. <laughs> El jefe está aquí. Si. What he said. What they said. They and, said words. And we did it, guys. We finally made it to the ending of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5. And before we go talking to the actual episodes... We've seen villains take over the opening, but to see the hero retake their opening back. Yes. Yeah. That was pretty epic. Really and cool he does, stuff. like, he did his, uh, the Shadow Dio pose, just like his hand over, hair flowing. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, so. They. <laughs> I've been meaning to say this, and now I can, and this is the perfect opportunity to say it. I love what David Pro does with openings. Same. I love how they have this running theme of like the uh, the boss or the 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 you know the the bad guy, the villain taking over and changing the opening because there's a time skip thing or a whatever reversal or some glitch or I really like that they've been doing that, using it to make remixes of endings add more animation, show a little bit more of what's going on. And it's just, you, you know, um, there are some people out there who might skip openings. And I personally don't usually, sometimes, I mean, if I'm, if I'm binging something, then yeah, yeah, I'll skip through. JoJo's? Sit never. Every single, never. Every single one of them every time because I. You, you can't skip them because you never know what's going to happen next. Well, and there was a thing at the end of this episode, and we can, we can, they change the ending, but we can get to that when we actually get to it, because it, it, was, it ties into the end. It wasn't on this episode, though, I believe yeah, it, it was. It wasn't on this, it was on the next one. It was on the next uh, one. But, but when we get to that, yeah. there's a lot to discuss. Oh, yes. Lots. Uh, but just, I just wanted to throw that yeah. one bit out there, because that was really good. Traders yeah. Requiem I'm still, like, on the bottom portion of my favorite openings, but that was, like, neat. It might be I don't know, man. one of my I favorite ones in terms of animations for what they did with Diavolo and what they did with Giorno on here, but in terms of, like, the actual song, eh, I still call it Traders Lullaby. Yeah. I It pumps me up. Every time I listen to it, it pumps me up. It really does. Uh, but then again, I'm the guy who loved Chase, so... Me too! Chase gave me real good, like, 2000s-era anime vibes, like Asian Kung Fu Generation. Yeah. Facts. It could have been a Naruto opening if it wanted to, or a Bleach one. Probably a Naruto one. Anyway, Damn, old, man, old man blathering over with. But we get back to it, and Diavolo is just getting pummeled. And even like that animation that they were still doing when they were yeah. fighting was like that was a that was a banging way to start off the episode. I even I rewatched the episode before it just to have a good solid. Well, admittedly, it was because I I was watching on Verve, and it said that I hadn't watched it on Verve. I watched it on Crunchyroll, so I watched it anyway. But as I realized, oh wait, this is the same episode. I figured, hey, may as well just rewatch the third one. And it was so great to just go in with that end sequence of Diavolo getting hit with Requiem and having the like the what was it like multi dimensional like loop thing, yeah. and then go right into the pummeling and then starting this episode off. With the pummeling. Yep. I really envy you, because I didn't do that. I just watched the last episodes and called it a day. Yeah. 
I, it was still fresh on my mind when it popped up. I'm yeah. like, yeah. all right, let's see how they're going to do it. And we're right back to the fist. Okay, let's keep rocking on. Yeah. I know you guys are probably confused about the whole, like, uh, Mista and the rest of the gang were, like, you know, sitting Dude. in the diner. Oh, you yeah. have no I, idea how confused I was. I was like, wait, did I, I knew put on the wrong a episode? Flashback? Yeah, no. I was As soon as it came up, because I had been told this by people about part five, which we'll keep, we'll get more into it. Yeah. But as soon as I saw that, I'm like, why is there a random flashback? Was my whole thing. I and... saw, I was thinking about that too. And I was wondering, is Mista replaying? Is, is Mista, or are they getting to a point where somebody says something really important to Mista that he remembers? Like, did Fugo say something? Did somebody say something to forecast? Is it going to end on a sad note? Is it going to be like, Narancia says something about them all hanging out together when this is all over or like and then it keeps going and we're like wait no this is a very different thing no for sure mm. um, and so we have that flashback and then we get back to the pummelings mm -hmm. and we go right back at it Oh, mura, 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 mura. And we essentially just get to the tail end of it, uh, where Giorno just, or Requiem, I should say, just punches Diavolo into the river. And, you know, the first instance is like, wait, where is he? And after, you know, what they've seen and how the boss can just come back sometimes, yeah, I don't blame him. It's like, okay, yeah, we need to go find out where he's at. And that led to, whoo, man. What? Hmm. I don't know how, how we go from there. Essentially, Diavolo thinks he lived. Or, I think he's still alive. We, we are in some weird time loops with the Requiem. Which, I think, might be the most overpowered stand in the series. Like, I know up? we just yeah I know we discussed like how yeah uh it just said no last time but what it did just who the the endless death just reliving it and experiencing that pain it's like whew. yeah so he what happens is when he gets knocked out into the river, effectively, he, so he crawls back under the bridge, and we notice that there's like a color and lighting change, isn't there? Mm -hmm. That's kind of our clue, is there is a color and a lighting change. And he meets this, there's a, a, a homeless guy, a vagrant. And he says, you're not going to take my jacket! You're not going to take my coat! Get away! Yeah. And he pulls out a knife and he stabs Diablo, or Diablo, right in the gut. Yeah, like really, it's a really deep gut, like really deep gut. Yeah, uh, yeah. Gut. He yeah. just he just stabs him, runs him through, swings his knife around, babbles about his coat. He just and Diablo apparently bleeds out. Yeah, he can't seem to do much. Uh, and yeah, dude was done in like he was living in the uh, the jungle in Seattle. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and fucking... Go so then he goes, he wakes up, and he's on an operating table. Oh, uh, before we move on to that, uh, when the old guy just randomly went up and <laughs> stabbed him, have you guys ever seen the Italian horror film Don't Look Now? I haven't seen that. I've but, heard of it, but I've never seen it. Wait, so, on what, Miguel? It's an Italian horror film called Don't Look Now. So never seen when, it. Okay, so when that like short little guy went up to Diabolo and stabbed him, there's a famous horror scene from there. Because this guy is th trying to find his daughter, and he thinks he sees her. Because he's always seen this like short person in a red dress. Oh, I remember yeah. this now, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that immediately reminded me. He just like looks over, just a little person walks up and stabs him. And you know, kind of makes sense because 
where do we where are we at right now? Italy. Mm-hmm. So that that was like one of the random things that popped into my mind right there. That makes mm-hmm. too much sense. But back to the operating table. Oh man. Yeah. And so he's stuck on this thing. And he's he's yelling at the nurse, Hey, you! Lady! Get me out of here! What's going on? (laughs) And she doesn't hear shit. She didn't hear him at all. And she just starts the autopsy, and he feels it, and then it becomes apparent he is stuck in a loop of just constantly being alive, being... getting his shit wrecked getting killed over and over and over and over. And And then the next part, the next one is what he gets hit by a car or something. Yeah. So he just falls back out of the blue. Cause he's like, he's starting to get like more and more scared. And so he like, somebody walks up to him. He gets shaken up a little bit, falls back and the car is going to uh, reenact the ending of part four to Diavolo's head instead of Kira this time. And then we cut out to another area where he's just like on a field. And at this point, Diavolo is just straight up petrified. Like not wanting to go anywhere else. Not just like thinking every little thing is out to get him. And so this like little girl walks up and he just like dead fear. Like, no, get away from me. It was, whoo. It was something. I don't know what even how do you classify this stuff? Right. Yeah, the only one who got it worse than Diabolo was cars. Is Chilling that true? out on the moon. Well, cars got blasted off into space. Yeah. I don't know people, if I people like to I say think, that cars lives on the moon. I think cars had it better than this guy though. At least like he's not suffering, you know? Well, cause the thing is cars is probably cars is probably hanging out with Frieza right now. <laughs> Cars is like in the Dragon Ball universe for all we know. Right. He's just oh like, god. He's probably gonna enter the next intergalactic multiverse tournament. <laughs> and he's could in you like imagine... universe ninety three or whatever the hell. Could you imagine a fight between the Z Fighters and the casted Zodzos? You know eventually Goku would somehow win. <laughs> I don't know, Goku I think Gold stand. Experience Requiem. I think Goku <laughs> would be like Ultra Instinct and Gold Experience Requiem would be like, here are all the possibilities of you winning, and none of them are happening. Back to base form with you. And, and then Goku would be like, that was a good fight. I'll get stronger <laughs> next time and beat you. And then somehow he does because he's. <laughs> That's what he does. Uh, yeah, so um, Diavolo is Dunzo, from the look of it, from the sound of it, from yeah. what Giorno tells us. Oh, yeah, he's like, I, I, and he still doesn't know, mm-hmm. like, how, but he's like... Yeah. And at I this think- point, I we should also mention, at this point, it, it was previously mentioned before, but everyone's, you know, everyone's souls have gone back. Oh, yeah. Um... And so, uh, and so, Mista and Trish are trying to head back to the Coliseum. They're like, "Hey, we need to go heal Bruno. He could still be alive, but um, as we all know, that's not the case." Mm. And Giorno knows this, and you know, we have another kind of look up and see the souls of those who passed on in the clouds shot. Which, mm-hmm. as always, uh, they're done beautifully. Yeah. <clears throat> and like that's essentially uh, before we get to like the final final part mm-hmm. like that's it for the main story because yeah the halfway point we go back to the flashback yeah because at Which... this point the boss is the boss is gone la squadra mm-hmm. is gone any opposition that giorno faced getting to the top Gone. 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 He is, you know, is the he's step at any time. And so it's like 
the sacrifices everyone made weren't for nothing because he now ultimately got his dream and he will enact it. How he does that, we don't know because as far as anyone else knows, this is it as far as his story is concerned. But then we start to go back a bit. Yep, we, get we back go back to the flashback. flashback. Yep, back to the flashback that they showed at the beginning with Mr. somehow admitting he wants to be a freaking uh, cannibal. Oh, yeah, his little bit of it. He was talking. He's going on about uh, how would humans taste? Yeah. I mean, to be that fair. Was, that's so weird. Like It was weird, but it makes sense. Because... Okay, but like, that's really the opening thing for the Zozo's gold, Golden Wind finale. But this is the second to last episode. The penultimate I, one. I consider this two-part thing to be like a full one episode hour-long special thing or whatever. I don't know. There wasn't a part one or part two to this. Yeah. I so don't they're, care. They're, they're two separate <laughs> episodes. Like, we don't accept headcanon here, Riz. Well, you know what? There's a thing! It's a golden rule! It's called broadcast order, and it will not be defiled! It is set in stone since the beginning of television. Exactly. We must protect the natural order. <laughs> so this is the penultimate episode. But I still agree with you. To open the second to last episode after the previous episode ended with basically the most, what? And a stand going, no, to, hey, guys. Do you think human meat tastes good? Only in JoJo's, though. Right. But he brought up his I hypothesis mean, that yeah. meat from herbivores is more delicious than meat from carnivores, meaning that humans will probably taste bad because we eat meat. And then Narantia has a little bit of, I eat more vegetables and fruits yeah. than I do meat. And Misa's it's a very like, Narancia thing to say, actually. And then Misa's like, oh, you must taste good. And I'm like, you know, a lot of fangirls probably think that, too. And right. fanboys. <laughs> hey, now. Hey, we are just right here, Miguel. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Um, it was pretty funny. It was nice. Um, so we get this, this, um, scene of them having dinner mm -hmm. or lunch no it's lunch i'm sorry it's a dinner time where i'm at it's like 9 15 and i've been screwing around all day today uh i had quite the adventure i went out to the mountains it was very nice um so they're doing whatever they're having their meal and then bruno gets a visit from a guy mm -hmm. who is asking for his help indeed he is is asking to dish out some justice uh, because uh, the guy's daughter had died and he suspected foul play. And the first question Bruno asks him, do you pay your taxes? And in the back of my mind, I just heard a Yoshi sound for some odd reason. Mm -hmm. Don't know why, but... Nothing! Mm -hmm. Uh, so he says, yeah, and Bruno's like, go to the police. And the gentleman's like, I've already gone to the police. And that bit kind of reminded me of the opening to The Godfather, where a gentleman or an undertaker comes up, or doesn't come up, but basically is mm -hmm. asking Don Corleone for a favor uh, for two hooligans who roughed up his daughter. And Don Corleone is like... Why did you go to the police first? Why didn't you come to me? And well, this one, it's the opposite. Bruno's like, don't come to me. Go to the police Please. first. And then he's like, the cops aren't going to help us. They are, they're not going to do anything for me. Bruno, I know you take care of the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Like, this guy knows. Look, if you want shit done, you go to Bruno. Exactly. Bruno takes care of people. If and so you want he, justice, you go to Don Bucciriadi. 
he's not done yet. Long. He's, he's not even the capital yet at this yeah. point. Uh, but Bruno says, "I won't. I won't take your money. I won't kill him. I will go investigate, though." Uh, because, you know, from the way the floor is told it, it did seem suspicious. Girl just randomly jumps out holding a stone ball? That and, you know, weird stuff happening in his turf. He's got to look at it. Mm-hmm. And so Bruno's like, okay, Mista, you go rough up the boyfriend a little bit. And Mista just sees a random round stone. Um, For a time reference for those of for people who might have uh <clears throat> for people who might have forgotten so i think it's around this point when thi- this occurred when the whole thing at the beginning happened with leaky i luca mm-hmm. yep. because yeah. all of this started with one of them saying oh i've got to go look into leaky i luca he just turned up dead And I think it was Fugo had to look into it first, or Mista had to look into it first. I think Bruno said he was going to look into it, uh, because Popol ordered him to investigate it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then this this comes up, and and, then he passes the buck to somebody else. I think he tells Fugo to look into it. I believe so. And, you know, when Mista touches the stone, he hears... Someone pleading to be killed. And we have Spooky Stone now. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and it's weird. Uh, he doesn't say... It's it's especially weird because he doesn't say anything about a stand. Nope. There's no stand presence from this stone. Just randomly appeared there? You know, he thinks, oh, did it just fall off from this counter or what? And every time Mista looks around, he keeps seeing a stone near him. If it's the same one, I'm not sure. I think it's, like, different ones? I got the idea. I couldn't tell if it was the same one or if it was, like, multiplying or if it was just displacing it in the world. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, if it was, like, just, like, blinking or moving through space the way that, like, cream does or something, or, uh, the hand. The hand, right? That was Okuyasu's. Yeah, that was Okuyasu. Um, but, again, it's not a stand. It's just a weird rock. But when, and, and when he touched it, it like wrote it on his hand, too, mm-hmm. didn't it? It, it did. like it etched murder. it and carved it into his hand. Right. So it this is already there, real strange. But, yeah. But yeah, no, it just like said killer murder on there mm. like right away. And this is freaking out because he keeps seeing it. And, and so nobody when, else is seeing it either. No. And so when uh, they drop him off, Bujarati's like, okay, he's acting weird. I'm going to watch over him to make sure he doesn't mess this up. And, you know, Mr. reaches the elevator, and he sees the stone again. Mm-hmm. And his first instinct? Pop a cap in it, into yeah, it. Yeah, shoot it. You don't know what it is. Exactly. Where's it case followed scenario? you. You shot a rock. Because it, it could be a It could be a stand. Mm-hmm. And because it's not unheard of for stands to be doing weird shit before somebody figures out that it's a stand. Mm -hmm. And so when he shoots it and it crumbles, it uh, takes the shape of a Bucciarati. And then we see it's like contorted and like messed up, too. Oh, yeah. Nope. And then behind the door, we see the sculptor. And then episode ends. Yep. And, yeah, no, to end the episode by going to a flashback story, did not expect that. I didn't either. Um, It was very interesting. When Um, I first read this in the manga, I was kind of like, 
okay, what's going on here? Did I miss a chapter or something like that? Because I was like, okay, but like I was like, oh well, this is part of the story. All I know is that my friend said I love the Sleeping Slaves arc. This arc is called Sleeping Slaves. This, yes, this little is end the title bit. of the next episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and she just said, oh yeah, it's really great. Um, she's very, very tight-lipped about JoJo stuff. She's very good about, you know, spoilers and things. Uh, mm-hmm. But part five is her favorite part, and she kept waiting and waiting and waiting uh for me to get to certain parts because she's like M- metallica fight that was the first thing she was really hyping up like oh man metallica you gotta see metallica um but it was interesting and i was really i was like where's this going i really want to see where this goes it, it felt kind of different too if that makes sense. No, like, because usually at the end of JoJo's, like, for, well, we all know how part one ends. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Jonathan's dead, then how, um, oh, shoot. <sighs> Why am I forgetting her name? Arena. Arena is going on about how, you know, She'll his legacy, Jonathan's yeah. legacy will live on within his descendants. Uh, part two ends with them kind of basically everyone, all of them end in an epilogue kind of way. This doesn't feel like an epilogue, mm-hmm. so we it's, sort of got one, but we all that we really got was what Polnareff saying he's going to live in the turtle and Trish, I guess. No, uh, yeah, life. but this happens later on. Like, okay, because this doesn't happen in the beginning of episode thirty-nine. Okay, Sleeping right. Slaves that happens later on, like after okay. the flashback ends. Okay. Uh but yeah, no, yeah. So every kind of second to last or last episode always has had like final battle. End the final battle, and then like just epilogue. Here's what everyone's doing, mm-hmm. or we all moved on from that summer, or mm-hmm. we'll never forget everyone. it. Yeah, everyone parting ways. Mm-hmm. And this one just kind of takes you back to like it ties back into the first opening because it's yeah because it after because we see there's the stone a, of Bruno. It. And there's a bit that I'll bring up about that later. When I was actually going to gonna bring it up right now, because we see the oh, Bruno yeah. stone. Mm-hmm. And then, just out of curiosity, I'm like, because I'm seeing this, and then I go back to the first opening. And within three seconds behind that statue is that same freaking stone. Oh, now that I didn't see. Oh, I was yeah. to talk about something else. This is Oh, different. no. Wow, oh, okay, no. dang. Like, wait, wait, which one? Wait, which the, opening? Uh, fighting gold. Like, within the first three seconds where the statue pops up, there's mm. a, there is the freaking Bucciarati rolling stone. Like, oh, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cap. How did I miss that? I know, right? Like, I went back, I'm like, it's been staring at us in the face the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like, I think somebody brightened it up on this one. Well, no, this was... That's crazy, dude. Uh, let I me see. didn't Can even... Man. Oh, man, I wish I was better at capturing these things faster. Here we go. Faster. Do it. Bam. Like. Oh, no. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's right freaking there. It's right there. <laughs> oh, my God. The more I stare, oh, the more man. defined it becomes in my eye. I know, right? Because, like, okay, when he first showed me this, I was like, oh, that's cute. It's the leg. What a sad. Oh, wait, that's not a sad. Oh, wait, that's the. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was my literal thought process when I saw that. No, that was the same for me because uh, somebody on uh, 
the anime section of 4chan is like they they put it in front of our faces the whole time and everyone's reaction was those freaking mad lads at David Pro. Right. <laughs> like and Dude. so as this episode kept going on, everything about the first opening just keeps adding up, adding up, adding up. So before we get into that, we keep moving on with the flashback. Uh, so Mr. slaps around the sculptor. Like, the sculptor's not even putting a fight back. And yeah, he's... he's... He's getting beat up, and he's not even trying to defend himself. Like, something's up, and it doesn't... This guy does not appear to be, like, some ice-cold, manipulative killer, dude. Like, nope. there's something going on. And this rock is more than it seems, yes. obviously. And mm -hmm. when I first saw it, I thought it was a stand. Right. I'm sure that's what everyone thought. Oh, it's a stand. It's got to be. Mm hmm. And the thing is, like, the sculptor's not attacking him. Like, he's just taking the punishment. And he, uh, you know, he's trying to tell him, bring the stone back. And, you know, he plays Russian roulette and he basically just tells him. Rolling Stones, the stand name. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, it's it pre it predicts their future deaths and it confronts the target to let them die peacefully. So instead of dying in the painful way that that thing is telling you how you're going to die, it just gives you the shot, the chance to just end it right then and there. Mm -hmm. And so. And he explains it. It's like, no, this is what happened. Like, the girl's father was going to develop this disease, and then she was going to develop the disease as well. And so she took the pain, she took the stone's death so that she wouldn't have to suffer. And then from her organs, her dad would be able to recover from the disease. And, you know, he keeps telling him, and Mist is not buying this. And so he, like, shoots him, or he keeps playing the Russian roulette. But the gun misfires. Yeah. Cause, At yeah. first they say, oh, it was a dud. And like, number five, why didn't you get do that? And like, mm -hmm. it's not my fault. And they're like, okay, two or three in a row. How about that? And it, he can't kill this guy. Nope. Because he's not supposed to die. Dying. And, you know, at this point, Mist is like trying to find a way. It's like... Is there any way you can stop this? Can you change this? And uh, the sculptor is like, maybe destroying the rock altogether, but I don't know if that will work. Because he's, he's not even sure about this, because uh, the way he developed his stand is similar to that of Tonio from part four, where it just happened. Mm -hmm. Like he was good at one thing and it just happened. Tonio was good at cooking. He developed a stand for cooking. This guy was good at making sculptures. Random rock appeared. And the rock is chasing down Bruno at this point, too, because it senses he's nearby. And as soon as Bruno touches it, you know, he's going to die. So this yeah. isn't like, oh, you have the choice. No, it's like the rock seeks you out, and if you touch it, game over. And so this entire time, Mist is just, like, trying to find a way. And he shoots the stone again, but when he shoots it, it just made kind of the agony Bruno was in in the stone worse. Oh, man, that was some trippy stuff. Right, very. And as the rock keeps, like, trying to, you know, get Bruno, he yeah. just, like, zips his way outside and... Mister, like a madman, just grabs the rock and falls down. Yup. He just dives for it. He doesn't yeah. even care. He's got to protect his boss no matter what. Mm -hmm. Now then, I am not one to kind of argue with anime physics, but... And we know that JoJo's characters can survive a lot of punishment due to willpower. 
or resolve. But falling from that from that height onto a car, Mister should have been dead already. Yeah. Yeah. But, no. Um, well, has, but has, has okay. Here's the thing. Here, here's what I'm going to say though. But if it's not his time to die, the yeah. stone probably protected him. Yeah. And what do you know? The stone protected. Smashes onto the car. His face is not on that rock. Nope. Nope. Now, this, is, this the rock is, is the part, destroyed. This is the part I wanted to get to. Mm -hmm. Or can I say this yet? Um, yes, you can. Because yeah. at this point, they think the rock is destroyed. Mm -hmm. Um. So there's an earlier part when they were talking about like, what are we going to do about a car? Like, we had one. Yeah, until a certain someone wrecked it. <laughs> and then Oh, wow. I Mista actually is like, about that. And then Mista's like, I forget what episode it is, but it happens early on in the beginning, and Mista's like, I told you it wasn't my fault. Mm -hmm. And it sounds <laughs> like a throwaway conversation. It, a total like oh well you screwed was it was it before Narasha fought against um it was before they were going on to the boat I think it might have been yeah so yeah like the before they were getting on the, yeah so like, it was like the third a, or fourth episode something like that and they were talking in the car my friend pointed this out and she said like okay so they're talking in the car and they're like. Well, yeah, what are we going to do about a car? I mean, we had one, yeah, until a certain someone ruined it. Or until a certain someone destroyed it. And Mista says, I told you it wasn't my fault. Like, I had to, or whatever. And this is the incident that they're talking about. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is crazy. Once again, and I don't remember, now again... I didn't read part five because at the time when I could have read it, the translation, we didn't have an official localization out and the translations weren't very good. So I skipped it. Um, now that we're going to get. It was the fifth localization. episode. Yeah. It was the fifth so episode. this happens in the fifth episode. And I'm not sure if this is something that happens in the manga or if this is another thing that David Pro added because they're so good at adding these little easter eggs these little mm -hmm. hints these little bits that are not in the manga even though sometimes uh, and i know i keep it was in the anime yeah i know i know sometimes i i always complain about the whole bit with fugo and the teacher it's just i'm sorry i got it they didn't need to put that in but they, yeah, they, yeah. but that aside, all these little things that they're adding in that and the bit with Fugo and Narancha when Fugo looks up and sees the bird and he sees Aerosmith. Oh man. Just all these little bits and pieces of these little treats they're leaving for people. I just I, I, I love that they're doing that. If this is one of those anime-only things, all the better. If it's not, it's cool that they remembered to put that in. Yeah. Because it's so easy to overlook. And then when you watch it, you're like, wait, what? Wait, what? Oh, wow, that's what they were talking about. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so when this rock gets destroyed... They walk away thinking it's over, but the sculptor looks over... Yep. And he's like, he should have just let Bruno take it because their fate just kind of became worse. And the dust settles out oh, and it has yeah. the bust yeah. of Bruno, Abacchio, and Arantia. Oh, when that, that killed me. That killed me. I was like, oh my God. And so Mista. the 16th. Mista, it, you were so well intentioned, but you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Why couldn't you was, have known? <laughs> oh, man. But the thing was, we don't know if their fates were altered 
like what their fates would have been had they not taken. Had he not Who knows? Destroyed. Maybe their faces. Maybe their faces would have ended up on the rock anyway. Right, because the way I the am of the belief, up, I am of the belief that the stone would have shifted as each. If it was like all these people are fated to die, it would just shift. Okay, well, when Bruno dies, then it would shift to the vision to the image of of Abakio, and then after Abakio died, it would shift to the image of Narancia. I feel like the same sort of stuff would have played out, but. I don't know. So well, no, because he, from the sound of it, he's really saying no. He shouldn't have touched it. Now it's worse, right? Is that really what he's saying? He's yeah. saying like you've dragged others, but what you're doing for this ver- for this path, it's like you guys are believe in this dream so much that it will. So be it's like thing. so, Mister doesn't touch the rock. Mm-hmm. They never defeat the boss, is what it was trying to imply mm-hmm. at. And it's like, it's going to be a ma- And it goes back again, it's like, this is going to be a major sacrifice. You will lose people. You will lose friends. It's... it's your, friends gonna, your friends are going to die, but you're going to get what you set out to achieve. Mm-hmm. And so this takes me back to the first opening, mm-hmm. where there's three characters who are all bound by one chain throughout the whole thing. Bruno, Narantia, and Abakio. Mm-hmm. And it's the chain of fate. And the line is what, what does he say about slaves? Something about a sleeping slave doesn't know their fate, or, mm-hmm. or I forget the exact line. A sleeping slave doesn't know their fate until they awake, so I hope you all remain sleeping slaves. Something along the lines of that. Because and it's because you're a slave to fate. You are and JoJo's is very big about destiny. Mm-hmm. Um before it was about the destiny of the Joe Stars to do battle with Dio. Not unlike in Castlevania, the destiny of the Belmonts to fight Dracula. The both came this... around the same time. Yep. <laughs> um <laughs> I like to call part one JoJo. Or I like to call part one of JoJo's Castlevania meets Fist of the North Star. Essentially, and I dearly love yeah. it. Yeah, I, I can agree with um, that a lot. Now, yeah. in in part five, though, they're really talking about, and and this goes into just it goes on into beyond like the metaphysical, like oh, you are bound to fate. This is destiny. It's it's like if you pick a certain path you're stuck like and they bring this up a lot time and time again you know narancia gets told this by bruno it's like and and, and a lot there's a lot of talk about don't be a criminal we're rich we're glamorous but we do nasty ugly things to do it and we get involved in business we don't want to get involved in Mm -hmm. and if you get involved in this you might end up dead there's a good likelihood and they go into that in fate, and it's like it's it's part of fate, but it's also just like that is the way this world works. It's not even fate or destiny or some mystic thing saying you're gonna die. It's like, no, man, if you get that involved in this kind of serious stuff, if you go f- that far down this path, this criminal path, if you get yourself involved in this dangerous stuff, it's going to end up biting you in the end and there's nothing you can do about that because you made the choice to go there in the first place and that i think is the overall that really i think is the overall theme of part five is fate can be absolute but a lot of times you are fated by the choice you make in the beginning yep Mm -hmm. that's very correct giorno is fated to get into this because he gets involved with Bucciarati. Bucciarati decides to help him, and he's fated to face those consequences. Narancia is too, so is Abakio. Everybody that joins him is fated to face those consequences because they that's how they cast their lot, and they are already involved in a dangerous world, and it, and it got more dangerous in the end. Mm-hmm. And so, the flashback ends, and we go back to Ford. Uh, 
And so the first thing that happens is uh, Jorno has the arrow. Mist is like, hey, hurry up. You know, we got to go heal him. And Trish trips on a round rock and immediately Mist gets a little PTSD. Yeah. Because he knows. And he knew the whole time. Mm-hmm. That's the th- that also killed me. It was like knowing that when he sees that, he's like, oh my God, he knows before everyone. He knew. He was the second person to know after Jorno. Yeah. As soon as he saw that rock and just like, oh man. Dude, but, part five cuts deep. Yeah. But it turned out that it was just uh, Coco Jumbo. He finally caught up with them. And uh, Polnaro Soul just kind of hung on to the uh, stand itself. So he's like, I'll be a ghost for a little bit before I pass on. <laughs> it's all good, baby. I don't mind being a turtle. Dude, I don't understand. Like, that was... What is he going to do as a turtle? Uh, Make sure that he dictates his will so that Jorno can build Polnareff land for him. That'll <laughs> be his legacy. Yeah. I, w- I would go to Polnareff land. Mm-hmm. Would you? Because I wouldn't. People talk... Bro, people, I'm sorry. I'm going to go buck wild because I'm a little faded and I have a lot of feelings about JoJo. People give a lot of shit to Polnareff. And he did wrong, but he redeemed himself every time. Yeah. And you cannot say that man did not love his friends and do everything he could for them. Even if he put them in the danger, he he had good intentions right from the start, and he was just driven too much by emotion. I don't think anyone here was questioning that turtle in peace. But, uh, no, he a turtle in peace. Essentially, because he didn't have a body to go back into when the soul swaps were go- kind of going back, because his body was dead. Mm-hmm. He. He just basically hung on to the uh, stand of the turtle. Yeah. Uh, and so, so now they... he's like living inside of the key room. Yeah. So after kind of all this kind of heavier stuff, we, you know, we kind of do get a little bit of lightheartedness where Mr. <laughs> oh, man. I can't he's remember. Centrish besties. I yeah. love them. I, I don't know if, I he, love them so I don't know if he was like sniffing himself or he started sniffing Trish. But basically, they're kind of <laughs> smelling each other. And Mist is like, man, I do stink. You're like, oh, damn, you were right, girl. Shit, I need a speed stick. <laughs> and she's like, I guess they're not that bad. And so uh, what happens with the uh, beetle arrow is Giorno just, uh, he's just going to keep it inside the turtle. Like, he's like, that's what the... Uh, those who passed on would want us to kind of keep this and, you know, we had an obligation for them to keep this safe. Yeah. And, and then we get to the final ending. And right up front and center, Rolling Stone was also staring at us the whole time. Except this time it was carved out instead of just like the sphere rock that yeah. was always shown like at the beginning of Modern Crusaders. Yeah. And that was like my first instinct. I'm like, oh my god, that was staring us right in the face as well. Right. And, you know, ev- everything's the same except uh, at the end we get uh, GER instead of regular Golden Wind. And that was uh, that was pretty neat. We've got changes to opening and endings. But wait, there's more. Yep, the- they threw a Marvel sting. At- well, they threw... I don't want to call it just the Marvel sting because plenty of other kinds of people. Well, I mean, I, I but Marvel think... started it, guys. It's just yeah. Marvel. The Marvel just made it an expectation. Yeah. Unfortunately. Marvel made it an uh, oh, Can of worms not getting into that. Um, not every movie is going to have an end credit yeah. sting. Dunkirk does not have an end credit scene. Unless now... you're somehow expecting them to go into the air battle of England. 
There's like uh, Dunkirk is like what's what's the sting? Uh, the rest of the fucking war. But no, it ends with the opening of the window, the mafiosos bowing to the new head of Passione, Giorno mm-hmm. Giovanna. In a fantastic black outfit. And Amista is sporting a real cool navy blue. Oh, yeah, I like greenish the greenish getup. Yeah. They have a they have a I really like that they went to a different uh color palette. Same. Agreed. Oh, and uh in case you guys didn't, didn't realize, like on the table on the counter, mm-hmm. you see all a bunch of different stuff that like that represents each character that passed. Um you have like yep. the zipper for Bruno, you have the wine that uh Abacchio drinks, and you have the flowers that uh Giorno left uh Narancia. Like Narancia's a hometown's uh flowers that only bloom wherever he was from. We're on that we're on that sand. I was like, oh they got every detail correct. Mm-hmm. They're they're still preserving their memory. So good. <gasps> I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. No. You're gonna cry. No. Shut up. <laughs> Killer Queen already made him cry. Yeah. I can handle it. I'll get over you. I know I will. I'll pretend my ship's not sinking. And I'll tell myself. I'm over you, cause I'm the king of wishful thinking. I just had to express my emotions. That'd be a no for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not my best moment. But no, it was uh, ended very well. And now yes. we await part six. But uh, Hopefully. final thoughts on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5, Golden Wind, and where you guys would rank it. We'll start with Anthony and move down. Uh, let's see. Um, it, it was just a very unique type of ending because, you know, not a whole lot of uh, anime, especially like JoJo's, they don't end things on a flashback and then go right back to the actual ending. They just, you know, go start to finish and it just ends right then and there but they managed to do something different and unique and i love it um yeah i i get i definitely get ready to uh like a 10 out of 10 for me where would you uh, rank it among the uh five parts that have been animated mm, i would give it i'll give it a eight a eight for that one and i think for the previous parts i think i gave part four a nine and okay so if you're ranking it one two three four five one being the highest five being the lowest where does this fall is what i'm trying to get at oh um let's see i really like part two and i really really like parts four and five was definitely really good too i would say i'll rank it Second to part, I'll, I'll rank it like maybe part two is my is my top favorite. Then part three, then part four, and then part five, which is those two at, at, at the bottom. Like part three is above part one for me. So yeah, Connor, same question to you. Uh, and where do you rank it? So I really like it. Uh, as I said, it's honestly my new favorite. I find that um, as the stories expand and these new characters and new concepts get put in and they really change as the world expands, I get more drawn to all these little things um, and the different stories. Uh, I would rank 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, honestly. Um, as far as animation, now I do love them all. Uh, one, I think, went at a little too quick of a pace. There were some things, there were some aspects of Jonathan's personality that could have been put out and animated a little better, I think. But part one in general does move very quick, even when you read it. 
Um, but it's good. It's solid. It has a lot of heart, and I really like it. Um, it was goofy. It was fun. It just had all these little bits and pieces and things about it that drew me in. But really, for the anime, I gotta say five, four, three, two, one. That's that's how it goes for me because part four really won me over with the way it was stylized. Mm-hmm. Uh, and part five just cut above, just that much better. Riz, same question to you. Overall thoughts. So final rankings. I'm gonna start my overall thoughts here. That's I absolutely loved. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> I'm Riz. So, Jeez, I absolutely okay. loved Part 5. But there's a but. The mm-hmm. If we had ended it before the weird going to the flashbacks, going through all the stuff to rock, I feel like there's a stronger ending, but that's my opinion on it. So you're saying don't um, do the flashbacks? Yeah, uh, to me, so I went into the flashbacks completely confused, and to be honest, I didn't quite catch on to everything to do with Rock until halfway through this podcast we recorded. And heard off. It, it, like I, I, I could have probably watched it again and gotten a better idea of what's going on, probably if I really wanted to, but my, I kind of based this off of the fact that I watched it once. I should have gotten from the first go the entire idea of what is going on in the finale. One, well, honestly, I'm going to say this. That is an important viewpoint to say because there are people who are anime only. For whatever reason, it is easier for them. And I'm one of the them. Like from, and, yeah. and that's totally valid. I am one of those people because, again, Excuse me. Mm, I choked good? on my yeah, I <laughs> choked on my uh, matcha tea latte. Mm, wrong pipe. Um, that sounds like you a know. Sound. It's this is really the only we got to remember. JoJo's was first published in 1986. By the time it was first animated in 2012, there were already eight parts of the manga. Yeah. That year was the yeah. first time that we got any of the parts other than part three localized. So, like, we have a whole new generation because this is really... <clears throat> this is the biggest JoJo has honestly ever been. Uh, yeah. And so, outside, let's, make that, you know, let's make that distinction. Yeah, yeah. Outside, outside of Japan. Japan. Outside, yeah. uh, outside Japan, of course. This is the biggest... I'm, say, I'm, I'm gonna say strictly from... I would say in Japan, it is probably also featuring quite a comeback from the anime. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just because, you know, anytime an anime comes out. Well, and also, you know, it's it's been, what was it? 2016 was the 30th anniversary of JoJo. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a big time for it. Okay. And people being able to access this great series... You know, anime is going to be one of the only ways because here's the thing. I just went to Barnes & Noble today. You know what I saw on the shelves? Barnes & Noble, major bookstore, carries a lot of manga, has catered to manga more recently than anything else. They still only have just, you know, volumes one and two of Diamond is Unbreakable. That's all that's out right now. So, yes. Part five isn't readable. So, that, again, in traditional very, means. Yeah, in traditional, traditional means. means. Uh, but, yeah, no, I just, I wanted I, to I sorry to hijack a bit. This. I wanted to put that, I wanted to put that out there. That, I, that I is a good, so, important. So, going back to what I was saying, um, I've never read the manga. Like I said in episode one of this podcast way back when we started. Um, I have intentions at one point during that last couple of months that I would go back and actually read the manga. But let's be honest, that never happened. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of things just like piling up on me that I couldn't make the time to go do it for one reason or the other. So for me, it just didn't make sense to read the manga. So I'm looking at this from just a anime perspective. 
was how I viewed part one, two, three, and four. And I got to tell you, part one, very cut and dry, very clear cut, like how it's laid out. Yes. Dio is bad. Dio is a thing that needs to be destroyed. Jonathan Zostar is basically Clark Kent Superman kind of persona of like this ultra justice kind of guy who's just there to do good by everyone around him. And it's a very simple story. But then part two, I mean, yeah, we got Joseph, who's a bit more of a... I don't want to call him an asshole. Oh, he's a dick. He's cocky. Like, he's a dick. He's cocky. He's but a he's a dick. dick. He's, he's, he's a admitted dick. he's a dick. Like, let's be fair. He knows he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a dick. But the story is still fairly... It, it's still fairly, like, something you can follow and you can understand. Okay. Here's what's going on. We're following the saga of Jonathan's kid. And the same thing happened with Zotro. Grandkid. Gra- grandkid, yeah. Sorry. You're right. Grandkid. And then the same thing with Zotro. I mean, we're seeing, you know, the continuation of this family. And it's always, like, at the end, there's a very clear-cut ending to explain, here's how we're going to nicely wrap up all the crap that's happened justify all the people we've lost along the way and make it seem like a worthwhile ending that provides great action for those who are in the story just to sewn in while giving a, a fairly decent storyline for those that are into it like me and just just make it really awesome and that's what parts one through four have been part five kind of breaks away from that a bit in that this doesn't follow the Zostar family per se. Yes, Ziarno is a member of the Zostar family. In a weird way, I think I mentioned in an earlier podcast that I found it kind of weird that he is the byproduct of Jonathan's body, but Dio's brain yeah. as part of genetics. Like, that's just, you know, he is a Zostar. But he is actually only just Jonathan's kid. Because uh, the Piper Love's still Joe Star, baby. Well, yeah, but you know, it's a Dio product because Dio did it. Yeah, it's weird to think about. Yeah, but 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 in, in but in either case, this is still a Joe Star. We're following the family chronicles over the years, and this is the next logical thing because we do see some connection from Part Four with Jotaro and uh, little kid Koichi. I think his name is. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we're seeing the connection, but things get very different in part five. This isn't like a, we're here to stop this all-ending threat to humanity or here to stop just some big bad who needs to be put down. This is a story about Ziarno, who has no idea what his family background is. He has no idea that this freaking error that he found actually has relevance to his family. He's just going along for the ride and doing what he wants to do to become the new boss of the Mafia in Italy. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was great. It's a great thing to do. But with this ending, it just kind of detracted from that a little bit, I felt like. Like, if if we had cut it right where the guy fell in the water and he just was dead, none of the other stuff... I would have been okay if we had like this the scene where he goes through and he's hallucinating and he has the hospital scene, he has the scene where the homeless guy stabs him, that'd be cool. And then from there it cuts straight to Ziarno getting kissed on the hands by all the mafia boss people with Mista waiting on him and some explanation for what happened to um everyone else. I mean, that'd been fine. But adding in this unnecessary thing at the end, in my opinion, just it detracted in value for me. That is my little rant. Well, uh, okay. Um, anything else to add to it? That's my soapbox rant. Um, putting that into perspective, um, I still really, really love part three as the best one out there. Mm-hmm. Part three and part four, I have I have mixed feelings. I go back and forth between what's on like more depending on my mood, depending on the day. So one, two, interchangeable. Part three, part four. 
No, no, no. Part three, four, interchangeable. Part one, part no, part two, part one for me. No, then part. That's what I'm saying. Top two, yeah. part three, part four, interchangeable. Yes. And then and after that, I would say part five, part two, part one. Very well. Uh, that, that's my, my thought. thought. Yeah, my go for thoughts. It. The beginning was a little slow. Took a while to pick up. The ending, and a lot of people have said this to me as well, it just feels abrupt. Like, I like Sleeping Slaves, but I feel like that would have worked better as an OVA as opposed to kind of just, like, putting in here. Because I'm not going to say it feels forced, because, well, they've been freaking foreshadowing this since opening one. But it's it felt very much like this should have been an OBA as opposed to like part of the main episodes because it just feels weird. It just feels abrupt, just abruptly yeah. put in there. And I know there's a lot of people who like have that same feeling, like the ending just felt abrupt. But I will say part five probably has the best middle section of all yeah. five parts I've seen so far. Like that middle with uh, between when they be tr- when they're fighting the squad, La Squadra, and up till Green Day, like that is just hit after hit after hit. Yeah, like, that some is of the best enjoyable. fights ever in JoJo. Really. Super enjoyable, and then like, and you know they were hinting at this throughout when they were when the objective became get the arrow because you're gonna need something very powerful to defeat King Crimson. Like, it, that last fight was not the best one in the series. Like, all the other four, I think they did that final fight better, which kind of led to a more satisfying thing. This one was just like, Giorno activates a counter trap card that says no. And that's it. Which isn't, mm-hmm. which like I said, it's not off. It's not like out of nowhere because throughout the buildup to get the arrow for the final showdown with the Avalo, like they were saying, like this, we don't know what it does. It's going to make something very, very powerful. So I'm more with Riz on that one. I'm not going to say it detracted from it. It just felt weird. It felt right. like it why felt these, super weird. Why are these OVA episodes playing on the main series? It'd be like if Diamond is Unbreakable randomly just ended with uh, thus Roham Kishibi spoke. Yeah. I, I um, mean, like, yeah. Which is the Diamond is Unbreakable OVA. Out now. Find a way to watch it. It's fun. Uh, oh, it's no, out? It, yeah, it's out. Like, you have to find hard rips of it because they, like, the first two episodes were only made available to everyone who bought the Blu-rays of Diamond is Unbreakable in Japan. So we'll never see it then, basically, unless they bring it to we'll America. We'll see it eventually. It's just going to take a while. Yeah. Uh, so um, that's my thing. It's like, the beginning and the end are like, okay. The middle is fantastic. Yeah. And for me, it would go something like four, two, five, and three interchangeable, and then one in mm-hmm. terms of ranking them. Uh, but still, like, beautifully animated, beautifully acted. Looking forward to uh, what we'll do in part six because, yeah, uh, that I do want to throw in one quick tidbit to kind of add on to something Connor said earlier. I forgot to mention, so I have to agree with him that Zozo has become this huge phenomenon in the American vert, like in the American anime people who are like watching it now, even the manga viewers, because. When Anthony and I went to MechaCon this past weekend, mm-hmm. uh, our former podcaster Mason had run a huge Zozo panel it at was the convention. Packed, and like, that that room was there was no standing room left, Miguel, no. none. And oh, to know. be quite on, like to be quite honest, when we couldn't stay in that room because there's no standing room, there's no mm-hmm. seating, and there are people outside the panel room, literally standing there, just listening in. 
And if you read the description on the MechaCon like panel description for the event, it's literally just a pose off of all the Zozo poses over the years and over the parks. Mm-hmm. And they do them one by one. Oh yeah, no. Uh and that's the that's convention a huge... I go to, it's the same thing. Like we clear out an entire ballroom, not a small uh office room, no. We clear off an entire freaking ballroom and it gets pretty packed. Like people are leaning against chairs because there's that many people participating in it. Yeah. Like which is I like, I told Mason Mason told me at the end of all, like, the end of the pan, like, after everything was said and done, that Riz, Zozo's is getting more bigger than we realized, and I'm so excited for it. And we're going to need, like, the main event stage next year just to support the exponential growth of the fandom that we're getting. Okay. Let's, I'll put it to you in something that's not an anime convention. Okay. Uh, back when Star Wars Episode Nine revealed a new droid, BB-8's buddy, yeah. It was aptly named D10. Can you imagine D-O! what the next 100 posts were? Oh no. Oh yes. Oh, when was this? Like for episode 9? Yeah, for episode 9. So the thing coming out like this year. Yeah, for this thing coming out this year, like one there is a new droid uh D10 and like the entirety of it just JoJo's fans. Like, it's... You know, back when I started watching Part 2, this was... Oh, jeez, that was five years ago already. (laughs) Wow. It's kept growing just because it's a show that's easy to digest. And the story's like... There's a story in there for everyone. There will be some people, like one of my close friends... Doesn't really like part three that much. Loved part four and five. Uh, there's some people who don't like parts four and five. Love parts one and two. Like there's a part in there for everyone to enjoy, and it's super yeah. accessible. And while it's nice, like if you follow since part one, you don't you don't have to follow all the parts. Like if you skipped out on part four, you wouldn't need it for part five. Like you could say, oh, the first three episodes, but like first three episodes and then like nothing of koichi is ever mentioned again yeah like there's so many that you you don't have to keep together like there's not this overwhelming thing where when someone's trying to get into a new show like excuse me like let's say someone keeps hearing all these things about one piece well there's a lot to read up on there yeah. Like they can't just start at one point or they can, but they'll be missing out on a lot of stuff. Whereas in this one, if someone just wants to hop in, let's just say like they want to skip Haman altogether and just go into stands, which is what it's been known for for more for more than Haman now. Like by yeah. a good while, like that's fine. I would still as a fan still say just go through parts one and two. Like trust me, it is worth it. Like it just yeah. keeps bigger and bigger. And at which... the very least, if you don't like it, they're short. Yes. Yeah. So one thing, whenever I got into Zozo's originally, the way it was explained to me back like a year and a half ago now was, okay, Riz, I really want you to watch Zozo's because I think you would enjoy it. I was like, all right, cool. And then he gave me a caveat warning. Riz, watch part one. I'm sorry if you get bored by part one, but please, for the love of God, watch part one. Part two, infinitely better. Part three, infinitely better than that. And part four, infinitely better than that. And I gotta say, I actually really enjoyed part one from the beginning. I was never bored throughout any of the Zozos. Confused every now and then, but never bored. Yeah, it's got a lot of heart, and it's got enough action and enough really just sharp characters and good yeah. dialogue going on that you know you never tire of it. Oh yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, there there's like different things for different people, like how you said earlier. 
Mm-hmm. No, so it's uh, like nice that it keeps kind of it keeps growing, and you know, like every like every time there's like a new kind of meme, there's always going to be a JoJo variation of it. Yep. And you know, there's a lot of JoJo's memes that have gone just like even more so, like uh, Dio going, "Oh, you're approaching me," and JoJo going, "How am I going to kick your ass?" Like that's had so many variations. In oh the yeah. Last year, uh, whenever there's the infamous panel of Dio walking up to Jotaro, that's been parodied uh, to heck and back. Like, there's a lot. There is a lot, and you know it's like awesome to keep watching it <laughs> grow and like seeing more people who didn't get into it with parts one and two, but like, let's say since part four they've been getting into it. Like, there's like any of the parts is a good entry point for people to hop in and you know just to see this fan base like constantly grow is just like amazing yeah by the way if you look in our discord there's a photo that i think you guys would all enjoy involving one of our own podcasters let's see hang on <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Can we make that the cover photo for the podcast? I'm planning on it. <laughs> and even that photo <laughs> itself has been parodied to heck and back too. <laughs> right. <laughs> so well, I have to I have to tell you all the story, all right? It, it's kind of funny. It's so me, we're, me, we're already over an hour, so let's let's see how far we can break this. So Nathan, Anthony, and I had gone to the MechaCon cosplay contest to film it for Anime Secrets, like always. Mm-hmm. Well, we're getting out. We're kind of tired. We're kind of frantic because we wanted to interview a couple of guests from the weekend before the con ended. And these guys are leaving first thing in the morning, like early o'clock, basically on a Sunday. For me, early o'clock. For them, it's normal. Whatever. Yeah. Ass o'clock. And we're talking about, oh, we got to find these voice actors. And I see the Zozo cosplayers like next to me. And I kind of like give them a, you know, a, a look. I'm like, oh, these are really awesome. And we start talking to them, and they're like, "Hey!" And we're like, "Hey, can we get a photo of y'all?" And they're like, "Yeah, sir. What kind of photo would y'all like?" And we're like, "Uh, you know, whatever." So they got one of their friends who was nearby to be the person to kick. <laughs> and I got this idea of Anthony down there, <laughs> and and they he did and and, they re- did, and, and re- recreate the Sakio. Uh, Nista, no, 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 no. This is an enemy. Ah, 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 ah. Yes, yeah, so good. Like, bleh, 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 bleh. Beat the crap out of him. Bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> yeah. So that happened, and we just like it was a great little meme for us for the weekend. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Oh yeah. But no, most definitely, I took that for the cover of this episode because I knew it was coming the next day. There you go. Uh but definitely, like, just seeing it constantly, like, one last thing about the growth of JoJo's. Uh, ever since I got Crunchyroll Premium just so I can watch the episodes on time without having to go to questionable sites and getting a virus on my computer. Mm-hmm. Like, whenever you go to shows, like, they always go, like, in terms of their metrics, like, what's popular, this is what's up. So for Stardust Crusaders, it was, like, kind of, Top five, but not like all the way to the top. With Diamond is Unbreakable, the only thing that was beating it was Dragon Ball Super. And I think every now and then Boruto. And then that would Golden make Wind, sense. Cause... But for Golden Wind, every new episode that came out for out the, throughout the entire weekend was always number one. Mm-hmm. Like it was beating whatever new Isekai came out. It was beating out Boruto. Well, let's be fair, Boruto's kind of been dipping in popularity. But that's well, a different story. Well, Boruto's already been kind of going on for a while, hasn't it? Yeah. It has. It's been out for, what, like a, co- a year, two years or something, hasn't and it? And the anime just got to the tune-in exams, which was the first like, freaking movie. Keep in mind, I, I'm probably dating myself here a bit. 
I graduated in 2006, and that's right around when Naruto started coming out in the U.S. and getting really popular. Mm -hmm. I feel old um, now. And so, so I, I really yeah. only ever got as far as some parts of Shippuden, and I never really caught up with it. Yeah, but the point to make is, like, it's slowly becoming, like, one of the more popular ones. Like, even oh, today, yeah. when I went to go look up some information, this is Thursday now, it was still within the top five for an episode that was released on Sunday. Yeah. Like, it's popular. People are watching this, and, you know, I just, man, I just can't wait for the next part. Like, Every couple oh, of people yeah. I saw this past weekend was some variety of a star or a character from the series in some part. It, it was yep. like every 20 minutes to 25 minutes, I would see somebody just walking around, and they're not all connected. They're all just different groups. They all have their own Dio. They all have their own uh, star member. Mm -hmm. Their own part representing it. It, it, just, it was fantastic. For sure, and mm -hmm. you know we it's been a fun ride doing this podcast with you guys. I can't wait for us to start this back up when part six is at this point inevitably revealed because yep. this is something that's not gonna go anywhere for the foreseeable future yeah. until they catch up with Iraqi. So let's just keep enjoying the ride for it is. This oh yeah. This has been Miguel for Anime Secrets, and you guys have a good night. Say good night, everyone. All right. Good night. Ciao. Good night, everyone.